Hi, hello everyone. Today is a slightly different video. It's a sit down, I'm gonna talk about books, which I normally do on my other channel, but I figured this one would be more helpful for people who maybe aren't super bookish, but are interested in Korea. You read the title, you know why you're here. So I'm going to be going over 10 books that I thought really helped me kind of understand Korean history and society a lot better. And the reason I thought of doing this video now is because every summer um, I go back and I talk to the students who are studying abroad using the same study abroad program that I did, but I studied abroad 10 years ago. I studied abroad, I have a whole video about it actually, it's one of my older videos, <laughs> um, but I studied in autumn of 2012 until spring of 2013. I did the full year here. I was at Yonsei. I went through CIEE. I highly recommend it. Um, but every summer they have actually high school programs. And so uh, myself and a few other alums, we go back and we just talk to the students. And it just really gets me thinking and reflecting on how much Korea has changed, how much I have changed, um, where I was when I was a student and I came here, the amount of information that was available in English um, has drastically changed. Um, it's just, we live in a different world and we're all different people than we were 10 years ago. I'm just very grateful that throughout my 10-ish years in Korea, um, I was able to not only just make friends and experience life here, which is the number one way to understand a culture because I don't know what gave it away, but I'm not Korean. So learning about a culture from the actual people um, is very important. But other than learning it from actually being here, going to museums, talking to people, um, another really great way to learn about the history and society us through these books. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. I would also very quickly like to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace, who you know and love. Squarespace is a place to host your online presence, as you guys know from my blog, carrycakes.net. Great blogging features include a comment section, an email list ability, membership subscription feeds, um, you can connect your social media accounts, they have really great analytics, um, but they also have really great templates to make any kind of website. They are free, they are so easy to customize. They also have monetization features if you wanna start a shop, really anything you want um, in order to put yourself out there online, Squarespace can help you with. So if you go to squarespace.com right now, you can actually try it out and set up a full website for free. And then when you would like to launch it, you can go to squarespace.com slash carrycakes and get 10% off of your first website or domain been using them for many years. Thank you as always to Squarespace. Okay, so I guess a little background first before we fully dive in. And then I think in between, as I'm talking about books, I'm gonna order Bingsu because I've never actually ordered Bingsu before. And I figured while we're talking about learning about Korea, I should have a new Korean experience. So yeah, there's gonna be like a time jump in here. It is way too early for Bingsu. I would lose my mind. It's 11 a.m. Bingsu is not a brunch food for me. So if I look different from the beginning and the end of this video, it's been a day. Background for me though. So I came here in August of 2012. So yes, I did touch Korean soil before BTS debuted. <laughs> My understanding of Korean culture came mainly from K-pop and K-dramas. I wasn't a huge K-drama girl and I think partially it was because the K-dramas available pre-2012 were extremely rough. It was the boys over flowers era. It was a very toxic, it is not the dramas that you see today. Let's just say that. I knew I, you know, there was no thought in my mind that like, oh, Korea is like this. Like I've watched telenovelas. K dramas are not an accurate representation of reality, but it definitely does put some things in your mind. I mean, simply the beauty standards. What else? I think I, it helped me understand maybe like more of what people Eat. I actually remember getting comments. This is back when I like started my YouTube channel. Someone asked me to please go to Paris Baguette because they saw it in a drama and it seems like a really cute cafe. And Paris Baguette is like, how would I even describe it? It's not like a Starbucks. It's just like a bakery, not even Panera would, 
it's a cafe that's on almost every corner um and so for someone to be like i saw it in a drama and it's in seoul as if there's like one location um that's kind of what k dramas do is they'll show you like a little thing and you might think it has a much bigger significance than it does but it's it's just a run-of-the-mill bakery that's on every corner, you know? So I was going in thinking that they had crazy-ass TV shows that I knew didn't coincide with reality, but... Mm. And then I was from... I started listening to K-pop in like 2006, so I was very much coming from a K-pop world that had bizarre shows that were just so strange, like Super Junior had a science show. <laughs> and then in terms of on YouTube, it was like Eat Your Kimchi had just started and other than that, there wasn't much in terms of like YouTube, YouTube in general. I mean, YouTube was a baby back then, but there was just like in no way, shape or form the amount of on the street, especially in English information about Seoul or Korea at large. I majored in East Asian studies, but most of my credits and most of my classes for that major came when I was in Korea. I took a ton of East Asian and Korean specific philosophy classes, a lot of like modern modern and pre-modern Korean history classes. So most of my knowledge about Korean history came when I got already got to Korea. It wasn't beforehand. In terms of what I knew about Korean history, it was so minimal in American public schools. We have a chapter on like Asia when it comes to world history and we talk about like China, Japan, and Korea almost as if they're one thing. If anything, we talk about China and we talk about Japan, but we never go into detail about Korea. We're very lucky to be living in the time that we are that I can go to, you know, places of historical significance and talk to people who were there when the event that I, you know, the event was happening. There are people who were alive during the Korean War, especially like so many things that happened in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, everything post-Korean War basically. Like I am very, very thankful that even though I came to Korea with a less than basic knowledge of the history, um, I was able to access so much being on the ground here. And so first off, I'm going to be sharing five, five books um, that taught me a lot about Korean history. First up, I have physical books. If you watch my book channel, you know that this is rare. I'm an ebook girl, I have a Kindle, but I have the physical books for these. Um, first up is one you have most definitely heard of, and this is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. Originally written in English, this was not translated. This is a long book. Yeah, almost 500 pages. This is a book that I read even after having had many Korean history classes. This was a point of view that I had never seen before, I had never learned about, so I think that this is a really interesting book to dive into. Um, Pachinko is a multi-generational story. We follow a family starting in the early 1900s near Busan or near Yosu, so very southeast Korea. It's during the Japanese occupation and we follow a girl and she, for a bunch of different circumstances, um, she marries a man and they move to Japan. So this is something that I never learned about is that the Koreans who lived in Japan during the occupation and then never came back um, is really fascinating. So we follow multiple generations of this family that live in Japan through the occupation, through the war, and into, I believe we go all the way into the 80s. I think this is also important not just to understand that piece of history, but it's a piece of our present because there is still a huge number of Koreans who live in Japan and they face a lot of hardships, even though their families might have lived in Japan for so many generations. There's still a lot of hatred, but there's still a, a very vibrant community. If you go to Japan, if you go to Osaka especially, I really loved it. I definitely liked the beginning more, like the further we got into the, like the closer we got to present day, I wasn't as interested, but I thought that the beginning was really beautiful and it kind of shows the feeling of being in Korea during the occupation, the colonization. Um, so, yeah, I do highly recommend it. Um, I've had people who aren't even interested in Korea, like literally couldn't point to Korea on a map, read this and enjoy it. Perhaps you will too. This is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. After that, I don't know how I don't have the physical copy. I don't know where it went. Um, but I want to highly recommend Human Acts by Hang Gang. This is translated from Korean and it, 
god, this book broke me. This is a book that is about the Gwangju uprising in the 1980s in the city of Gwangju. Um, there were demonstrations, uh, mostly by students, against the current dictator at the time, and that dictator ordered the military to roll in and an unknown number of people died. And this is a really important thing to know about in Korea, obviously to this day. It's still a hot topic of did it really happen? There are so many people who deny that the Gwangju uprising, the military was ordered by the dictator. Some people claim that they were North Korean soldiers. Some people claim that like it didn't even happen. What are you guys talking about? So I think it's incredibly important to learn about it and to understand it. And if you ever come across someone who tells you that it didn't happen, walk away. I also made a video a while ago about films um, that help you understand Korean history. And there are a quite a few that surround the Gwangju uprising, so I will link that video down below. But the author, Hang Gang, is actually from Gwangju, and she writes this book in such a heartbreaking and just lyrical way. It's a bit abstract, so I think definitely Wikipedia checking facts about the Gwangju uprising beforehand will really help you, because instead of taking us to the front lines where you know, the tanks and the soldiers are running in and attacking. We are actually shown quite a few different POVs, but they're all these young students and they're kind of in a different area where it's a little bit quieter. I don't want to spoil it too much, but it's a very different point of view of the, the uprising than the kind of action heavy stuff that especially you see in movies and TV. Um, so I would look up more about it, but it is just so beautiful and heartbreaking and it goes. We, we also flash forward to the present to see, I mean, this was 30, maybe 40 years ago. People who have experienced it are alive. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's a, a really, really beautiful, beautiful book. Um, very short, very important to kind of understand current Korea. Human Acts by Hanga. It's also recommended by Namjoon, so <laughs> read it. After that, I'm not gonna lie, I picked this book up simply because the cover is amazing, but the story is actually also really good. This is Beasts of a Little Land. This is similar to Pachinko in that it takes place during the Japanese colonization period, but what's different is that this takes place in Seoul, and it was so interesting to read. There's all these different POVs, all these different players, but it was so interesting to read about certain neighborhoods that I knew. Like, so much of it takes place around like Jongno and what I, I just kept picturing in Sedong. It was just really cool to be able to picture where all of these things were happening. This follows, like I said, just a bunch of different people. Um, some people are kind of, would you call them courtesans? Uh, yeah, courtesan school. We follow people of all ages, specifically one girl who is training to be a kind of courtesan. And obviously everyone in that line of work has to deal with the Japanese. It goes a little bit more deeply into the fact, the Korean factions of the movement to try and overthrow the Japanese. All of Korea, everyone in Korea didn't decide like, oh yeah, this is the right way to do it. Let's go. There were all of these different factions. And so, yeah, I just, I really um, appreciated this. This is Beasts of a Little Land. And this was originally written in English. Yeah, this was written in English. After that, I'm cheating a little bit. Um, this isn't necessarily going to help you understand Korean culture in Korea at large, but it's a book that I really love and I found super interesting if you're interested in historical fiction. Um, and this is Black Flower by Young Ha Kim. Young Ha Kim is one of my favorite Korean authors, so but Black Flower is very different from his other work. So this is in the early 1900s, and during this time, a lot of Korean families were looking for ways to have a better life. Um, this was like right in the middle of the Japanese occupation, so any chance to get out or just kind of change the path that their life seems to be going on, a lot of families took that. And so when a bunch of people from Mexico came and said, hey, we can offer you a really great life, over in Mexico, 
more than a thousand Korean families went and when they arrived they realized that they were essentially sold into slavery. It was indentured servitude but there was absolutely no way that they could ever get out of their debt and so they were enslaved in Mexico working on plantations and it was just so fascinating because I had never heard about this. It talked about just so many different things of hanging on to your culture and, and losing your culture and do you adapt to the people who are enslaving you um, in order to potentially have freedom but what does that freedom look like? It also goes into the Mexican Revolution. Um, it was just a really fascinating piece of Korean history that I'd never heard about and a fascinating piece of Mexican history which I also had never heard about. This one's a little bit different from all the other books that I will recommend but I'm, I'm just a sucker. I really liked this book. Some people said that it was very slow. I kind of liked that. I don't know what it was. I think it's a hit or miss kind of book but if that piqued your interest I highly recommend Black Flower by Young Ha Kim. And then last but not least in our historical books um, here's a collection of short stories for ya. This is The Age of Doubt by Park Kyungmi. She is a author from the 19 from the 1950s. These are translated works, a bunch of different translators worked on this, and this book kind of sits on the border of my historical recommendations and then my modern society recommendations because this isn't blatantly about Korean history but it just captures the mood and the age just environment of the 1950s. Seoul had streetcars. You could take a streetcar from Itaewon to Seoul Station. Isn't that crazy? I think it captures a lot of details that are just sort of quotidian and just so mundane that a history book might not go into it. So just stuff about the clothes and the money and what people are talking about and the pressures that women face, like what roles do they play and what roles do men have to play? How is like directly post-war Korea? It was just overall really fascinating and because it's short stories, you can kind of read one and put it down and return to it later. So I definitely recommend this if you don't, it's also the cover, like I definitely picked it up because of the cover. <laughs> yeah, highly recommend The Age of Doubt by Park kyung -mi. So now I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and I'm gonna come back real soon with the last five which are more about modern society and understanding Korea of today. And these books I think a lot more of you will be interested in hopefully. So see you then. Hopefully I will have Bingsu. It's happening. I got Bingsu and I look crazy. Hold on. So I just ordered this from like the closest Bingsu place. I don't know. Um, I've never done this before. This is exciting. It's also one of the hottest days. I said no spoons, guys. It's also one of the hottest days of the year. So this is really madness. It is not even melted, not even a little bit. That's, that's a feat, okay? So let me, this is truly Korean culture right here. Man, I can't reach the camera. I'll show you with my... Wow. Uh, and then you just mix it up. What did I get? I got typical pop bingsu, so with the sweet red bean on top. Oh, that's cold. That is so good. I can't believe I've lived for almost a decade in Korea and I've never ordered this to my home. It's dangerous to know that it's that easy. Now uh, for the rest of the video, my last five books, I want to introduce you to books that I thought helped me understand current Korean society. I feel like it's obvious, but just in case, no one culture is a monolith. So I think that these show you a lot of different ways of life in Korea, um, tries to show you different aspects of the culture, but there is no book that's going to tell you about, like you're not gonna read it and perfectly understand everything, you know? Um, even people who are born and raised here don't understand every aspect. I certainly don't understand every aspect of American culture. So um, these are just books that I think give really interesting perspectives um, on what it's like to be living in Korea right now. And the first one I want to recommend is a book that I read a couple years ago that I really loved called If I Had Your Face. This was originally written in English, so it is not translated. And it actually bizarrely takes place 
in my neighborhood, <laughs> we follow a group of girls who only know each other because they live in the same villa. And a villa is like a three to four to maybe five story, very small, kind of like condo, usually just like one room studios. I lived in one, I lived in a basement. <laughs> it's where a lot of like single people who live and work in Seoul live, very like low rent kind of thing. The reason I recommend this is because it deals a lot with kind of like the night life. Um, we have a girl who is a hairdresser and makeup artist um, and directly in my neighborhood starting at like 6 p.m. you will see just like hundreds perhaps thousands of women going into salons to get their hair done for the night and then they will go out whether that's just for clubbing for fun or maybe they are entertainers or escorts or workers anything like that they get ready and so she works in that world we also follow someone who is an escort we follow people who are just from kind of all walks of life but all kind of in that world that comes alive after dark here in seoul um just learning about that and it just felt so accurate like especially like i said it kind of takes place in my neighborhood the certain details that she pointed out like certain shops like she must have set up camp like at my intersection and written this book because even the way she's like so i turned the street here and i saw this and it's like oh my god that's yeah that's my street um it was so interesting and accurate and it was just really a world that i have never had access to i've never spoken to anyone who works in that world so it was just um I thought really interesting, really short. It talks about plastic surgery, Korean idols, how often that goes hand in hand with night work. It was, I thought, really, really good. If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha, I believe. Really loved, highly recommend. <laughs> Next up, I want to recommend Love in the Big City by Sangyoung Park. This was a translated work. This book, I loved it for so many different reasons. Um, first of all, it is one of the very rare translated works that is written by and about the gay male experience here in Korea, but it's also just funny. There's, there's a lot of darkness to it, but I think the author might be the same age as me because there were so many references that he made that were like spot on like the k-pop that i listened to in middle school was the k-pop that he listened to in middle school and so they would talk about like going into a club and they would be playing tiara and everyone would be like this throwback and go crazy and like yes yes it's darkly funny i think that i forget the exact thing that happens to him but something happens to him where he's like has a bad date with a dj and he's like well i guess i hate all djs now you know <laughs> it was just written um in a really engaging way but it follows the life of a man living in korea who is gay who is hiv positive and just goes through his life um it's split into four parts so it feels a little like four different short stories i think a couple of them were a little long like there were definitely sections that hit a lot harder than others but just to read like a contemporary young person talking about this community in korea that doesn't ever get really talked about it was just a really good time and like i said there were just these references that were really great um so i highly recommend love in the big city sorry i gotta take breaks to keep eating this before it melts oh no Whew. She's back. Um, okay, the next book I wanna recommend is one that you have definitely, definitely heard of. Probably most of you have read. This is Kim Ji Young, born in 1982, 1985, 1982. This is also a translated work and it follows the life of Kim Ji Young, who is a woman who was born in 1982. The thing that I find really interesting about this book is that it's such the normal experience for most women in Korea growing up in the 80s. It's a story literally from like her childhood until she is a mother with children. Reading it, there were so many things that I think every woman can relate to, but there's a lot of really specific things 
um, that Korean women, especially of being born in the 80s, had to deal with. It's an important book for women in general, but I think it's a really important book for understanding the woman experience in Korea. But the thing about it is that it's ordinary. I think that a lot of times when people write books, the main character has to go through something extraordinary or unique or something quote unquote worth writing about. And with Kim Ji Young born in 1982, this was just the most basic, sad, frustrating, upsetting, but very basic life. And I think that's why so many people resonated with it. It was a big hit in Korea. A lot of people, men, didn't like it, um, but it was a huge hit in Korea, huge hit internationally. And I think it was because women could see themselves reflected on the page. They might not have had some kind of extraordinary life, but it's worth writing about, it's worth hearing about, it's worth recording and remembering. I don't know how to explain it. Like the actual reading experience for me wasn't amazing, but I think that it's it's really important and you do learn a lot about the expectations and the roles that a lot of women have to play and how they are not supported and not believed and definitely um, get your hands on that. And it's another Namjoon recommendation, guys, one after another. <laughs> Next up is a book I read literally last week. My tongue is frozen, hold on. <laughs> I read this book last week. I did not enjoy reading it. Ooh, this is a dark, dark book. But I think it gives a kind of well-rounded view of modern society right now. I showed you Love in the Big City, which talks about a gay man's experience living in Seoul. Concerning My Daughter is about the mother of a lesbian woman living in Seoul, and it is not a funny, joyous, like, l don't get me wrong, Love in the Big City is dark, but there's humor to it. Not a single laugh was had with Concerning My Daughter. This is Concerning My Daughter by Kim Hyejin, translated. Um, this came out in 2017, I think. This is a deeply dark book and very sad, but it's an interesting one because it's modern day, but it is from the eyes of a mother. Her daughter, um, because of the housing crisis and the job crisis that is still going on now, her daughter moves back in with her mom who has like extra rooms that she rents in her house. And she moves in with her longtime girlfriend who her mom is like, you know, her friend, right? Even though they've been together for like seven years. It's a very short book that just follows her not accepting the relationship at all because she's like, I want my daughter to have a normal life where she has a husband and a child who will look after her. But also she works at a retirement home with people who had children but still don't have anyone to look after them. Like in the book, she doesn't quite come to, there's not like the epiphany moment. She is caring for people who, even though they lived a life according to the rules, and she herself lived according to the rules, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be happy or cared for or anything. Um, so shouldn't you just be living to be happy and fulfilled? Um, it's, I thought it was really interesting. Like you do not like the mom. And there's also like just a warning. Like, I don't know if you can look up trigger warnings for this, but she works at a nursing home for people who are like almost needing 24 hour, like very heavy duty care for dementia. So there's a lot of like talking about cleaning old bodies and stuff. Um, so it was kind of just a gruesome book visually, but also just how much everyone involved is hurting and and being hurt by the way that society is trying to control women. Um, so I would recommend it, but definitely like go into it knowing that it is a rough little read concerning my daughter. And last but not least, this is a piece of nonfiction, and this is Flowers of Fire by Ha Won Jung. Ha Won Jung is a reporter who has been reporting on 
the feminist movement in Korea for a very long time and she finally wrote a book. There's a lot of interviews. Um, this came out in 20, the very end of 2022. So there's a lot of information that's really recent. She goes through so many different things that happened um, that were newsworthy within the feminist movement. If you know anything about feminism here in Korea, um, if you bring it up, it's 2023 and there's a lot of people who are like, ooh, I'm not a feminist because there have been, you know, people will say like, oh, feminism in Korea got too extreme because there were a few groups that sort of became like men hating groups instead of feminists. Um, so it's a complicated issue here and I think that having this book, which was recommended to me by my friend Gisela, so thank you. Reading this book, I think you can not only learn a lot, but then you can go into conversations about feminism in Korea with a lot of knowledge. And she actually talks about that, um, how these are a bunch of arguments that people make against feminism or why feminists are wrong in Korea. Um, and here's what you can do to combat that. And there were just, there were so many things that I didn't know happened. Um, and it's just so sad, but there are also like, I have so much hope for the future because there's uh, there's one particular section about um, a school that, an all girls school who had a creepy as hell teacher, right? And they kind of gathered together and they had like a Me Too movement and it was awesome. Um, and so I just like, it was heartbreaking and it made me so angry, but it also gave me a lot of hope. Um, gave me a lot of knowledge and yeah, it's just it's so recent and yeah, I just I really liked it I think that um, There were some parts that were that read a little bit just like an article There were some parts that I could get more lost in but there were other parts that were just very much like reporting the facts so um, Some parts were like hit or miss for me, but overall I think that it's an important book to be reading and that is flowers of fire by Ha Won Jung. And I think that's it for me. I'm gonna try, I don't know how well these refreeze, but I'm gonna try and stick this in the freezer. This is a lot. Thank you for being here, for listening. I know that this is different from my other videos, but I hope some of you found it helpful. And let me know some books that you have read that you found shed light on either history or society here in Korea. I'm always looking for more. And yeah, I wanna give another shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. That information is down below, but you can go to squarespace.com slash carrycakes to get 10% off of your first website or domain. Thank you for supporting this channel. And yeah, um, if you are watching this, I am in Iceland right now, how crazy. Um, so I might not post next week or the week after, but I promise I will be back with some Iceland and England vlogs that I'm very excited to share with you. Um, and then we'll be back in Korea. So yeah, I hope that this was something of value to you at all. And um, I wish I could give you guys this bingsu. I will finish it, don't worry. I think if you just add a little milk maybe, like if you freeze it and then add a little milk, it'll get that texture right back who knows but i will catch you next time if you would like more book content from me you can go to carrie can read and yeah i will catch you guys next time okay thank you always bye <laughs>